What are the traditions of secularism in America? Well, there are essentially two traditions of secularism in America. One is called the accommodationist position, and accommodationism is essentially the idea that the state does not establish a national church, it doesn't endorse any one particular religion, but it does seek to facilitate what's called the free exercise. In other words, it, it tries to promote uh, the pe ability of individuals and religious communities to exercise their religious beliefs, to exercise their religious practice. So in that sense, it's seen as something that is uh, very much harkening back to the American founding. And that's pretty much, I think, how the American founders understood uh, the secular state uh, when the Republic was first founded. In more recent decades, however, we've seen the emergence of what's called the separationist position. And the separationist position essentially involves the state having very little to do with religion at all, but also expanding what's called the Establishment Clause of the, of the uh, First Amendment, and also radically shrinking the Free Exercise Clause. And this essentially amounts, I think, more or less, to the promotion of secularism as a way of understanding the world as a certain set of beliefs, and reducing religious freedom to more or less the individual. So on the one hand, you have the individual with their rights to religious liberty, and you have the secular state, which seeks essentially to make sure that exercise of religious freedom is confined to the individual. Uh, and that's, that's presenting a lot of conflict in the United States last, right now because you have conflict be between the accommodationist position and the separationist position, and this is reflected in American politics and, of course, in the legal system as well. And given these current disagreements between the different organs of state and within society, in which direction do you think secularism is developing in the U.S.? Until relatively recently, I would have said that secularism was developing in the mode of a more separationist approach. But what is interesting, I think, especially when one looks at court decisions in the United States, I think that we see the emergence of what might be called neo-accommodationism, in the sense that enough people in America, both on the left and on the right, uh, seem to agree that the separationist interpretation of the First Amendment is not at all faithful to American history, American culture, as well as the American founding. Uh, and so this is producing uh, this type of uh, neo-accommodationism, which isn't quite what one saw in America in the 19th century and the 20th century, but it certainly amounts, at least on the part of some branches of government, and certainly at the level of states, to a more friendly approach on the part of government towards religion, especially even when it comes to things like uh, charitable activities and the type of social functions that many churches and synagogues perform in the United States. So I, I think it's moving much more in that direction right now. And of course that could change uh, depending on who is the next president in three years time. Uh, it could change as a consequence of uh, court decisions. But I do think there is a sense at the moment, at least in the American, uh, among the American public, that separationism has gone too far and that America needs to return to a more accommodationist position. And given all of this, how can the American brand of secularism or secularisms serve as a model for other societies? Well, the American brand of uh, the secular state and religious freedom has already served as a model for a number of societies that grapple with this issue of religion and the secular state. I'm thinking, for example, of countries like uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and even Canada as well. So it's already served as a model. It's particularly influential in what might one call the, the Anglosphere. And we see in these countries you don't have an established church, uh, you don't have the state formally recognizing a religion, but you have a generally friendly approach on the part of the secular state towards religious activity and a desire to establish religious tolerance not as a way of shutting down religious discussion, but as a way of having honest and frank discussion of dif disagreements based upon religion between believers of different faiths, but also believers and non-believers.